Hi, everybody. It's Judy Glova, and I am here with Swami G. Welcome, Swami G. How are you? Hi, Judy. Thanks for having me. This is great to be here. Yes, and I'm welcoming our audience to the summit here. It is Mindset Mastery, Winning Strategies to Create More Time, Money, and Meaning in Your Life and Business. And I want everybody to know, you know, the reason why I, I you know, I love the work that Swamiji does because he really looks at how you make those shifts internally to see the benefits in the outside world. Not only that, he has been a lifelong learner. He has been a monk as well as a shaman, right? You're actually a monk and a shaman still. Yes, right? yes, yes I am. So the transitions, that's the other thing that I think is so fascinating about your work and, and, and your career and how it's transitioned is that you know, you've really gone off the beaten path you've definitely followed your inner guidance in terms of how you find um, mindset mastery in your life. And I just think it's awesome, you know, that you have that unique trend, those unique transitions and how you've been able to navigate to find that, you know, success in your life, the time and the money and the meaning. So my first question I want to start off with is, so yeah, so what does, you know, your mindset mastery, what does that mean to you? And how has that shown up in your life? Okay, this this is a, a great question. This is, as you said, it's the core of my work, mastering your mind, mastering your heart. And so the first thing that comes to my mind when I ask, I always connect internally with spirit. I mm -hmm. say, so what is mindset mastery for me? And whatever they tell me, I share. And the first thing I get is money. And so mm -hmm. I say, okay, money, what do you mean by mastering money? And they said, well, Look at the times, and, and all of you can do this, look at the times you didn't have a lot of money, and how did you feel? Mm. Okay. Were you, did you find happiness sometimes? I'm sure you did. Did you find happiness in, in free things, in nature, in, in a hobby, in, in a loved one? And then look at the times that you had as much money as you had, and rate your happiness there too. Mm -hmm. was happy did, did that money bring you as much happiness as you thought or did you say oh i made this much now i have to get this much mm -hmm. so i'm not judging money here i'm just saying let's look at money because it is a great it's the most material thing that we can relate and compare to our internal spiritual self mm -hmm. if we can have the most amount of money with the most amount of inner peace and joy that's mindset mastery to me that's the goal. Oh, wow. Well, and I also interpret it too as having, you know, the goal line and the soul line, you know, it's like <laughs> where we meet those two because, you know, money is like accomplishment and, you know, being able to have, you know, your mindset, your soul line, how you're learning in life, you know, having that, that inner joy, right. That you, right. that you definitely talk about. Joy. joy. <laughs> yeah. But what about, okay. But I'm curious though, because what came forward for me was what about those people though, that when they don't have enough money, they have a negative mindset and you know, what is that shift? You know what I'm saying? Because some people actually go down a rabbit hole and they right. don't see the connection of their mindset and connecting to, you know, that they do, they can have joy without having as much money. So how do you, how do you address yeah, that? This is, Judy, this is a kind of a touchy situation because I remember when I first heard, if you don't have money, it's your mindset. And mm -hmm. I took it as a personal, um, even though it may not have been personal, I, I used it as to further beat myself up, which right. is not, and I know that's not your message and that's not my message. We're just looking at, is it raining out? Bring an umbrella. Are you having not enough money? Change your mindset. There's no judgment here. Mm -hmm. So mindset mastery begins with what are you thinking? Because that's why I started off with money. Are you happy? Time. Are there times you're happy when you don't have money? And if so, then it's not the money. Because if money made you, lack of money made you unhappy, you would never be happy. So it's, it's just that moment where we have a negative thought about ourselves or we think we're supposed to have something. We think we're supposed to have X amount of money. Mm -hmm. we think this is the outcome life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And only when we imagine an external situation that's not there, that should be there, 
that's when we get angry or sad or confused or anything like that. Right. So what I'm hearing you say too is like the thoughts and the judgments and the conclusions that we make about not having enough money or, you know, not having enough. Right. That is what causes the, the feelings, right? Feelings aren't facts and thoughts aren't facts. And really? Right. And, and the realization is to have the mindset and, or to have, I wouldn't even just say a mindset. It's having the realization that we're more than our minds. Would you yeah. say that's true? Yeah. A hundred percent. And <laughs> really you're, you're, you're nicely floating into heart set mastery. Yeah. Which, which let's, let's strip it down because I, I love simple words. It's, yeah. it's self-worth. Okay. Do you love yourself? And, and if we don't love ourselves, we will look around and see everything as a reason why we don't love ourselves. Hmm. We love ourselves, we'll look around and say, oh, I'm so grateful for this. This person loves me. I love this person. I had a look at the beautiful sunset. I enjoyed my work today. Mm -hmm. But I know people who are very successful and they are over, I mean, I work a lot. Uh, so but I'm happy when I work. If I stop being happy, I take a break. Right. And I know people who push and push and push. And somebody just said to me, should I be taking this course? It's $15,000 and it's not going to make me money. It's going to get me followers on, on the social media. I said, let's look at it this way. Let's look at your heart. And mm -hmm. their biggest thing is play. They love to play. Mm. They, were brought up that, they were brought up to push. And they said, you know something, I have this certificate in play. I have this certificate in play. I can actually start my own play career and be happier. <laughs> Save your money. Look at, so what I'm saying is look at, take a checklist of what you value and what you already have of value right. and build out from value, build a bridge from, from your core of your values of your heart. Mm -hmm. Always be happy and you'll always be successful and money will be a part of that success at some point. Right. But if, if you build a bridge, <clears throat> excuse me, of external expectations, there's no foundation and you'll never be happy, no matter how much external success you have. Right, yeah, so it really does start with the inner core, that self-love and having that, those values being grounded in those values. And you know, I just wanna tie it back again to your story because I do know that you were a monk for a while and you know, so how did that, how did, how did your journey really color, you know, that path? Because I mean, when you're a monk, do you have a lot of money? And, you know, now you're a businessman. So it's like, you know, how does, how do you go from monk to businessman and, and, and do that? Like, how does that happen? Yeah, I, well, you know, I am a monk and I, I do have a business and I don't label myself. Uh, I would certainly wouldn't be a traditional businessman. No, I would not traditional. Or a traditional monk, because this is not what a traditional monk looks like. It's, but I am at the, my core, I follow my heart. I follow my spirit and what brings me joy. And so I honor the wet orange colors of the monk mm. and I honor the Western clothing of, the, of our country mm. here in America. So for me, this is, you know, I'm all about experience, Judy, because the theories always confuse me because we're, we're not to necessarily talking about the same thing either. So I lived a normal, semi-normal life as a child, yeah. and I did used to get some strange dreams that foretold some um, my separation from my parents. Hmm. And when I was 17, they were actually in a car crash, and they passed. Wow. And so there was this huge tragedy, and at the same time, I'm thinking, how did I know that? Who was telling me that? Hmm. Because I was now freed from being the son, I did say, you know what, I'm going to, and I, my heart just lost. I was in school for radio and TV and film, which I loved. Mm -hmm. and I suddenly said, I don't care about anything anymore, but I care about what is this mystical thing that I don't even believe in? How did that happen? Right. So then I said, you know, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And so I, I went off and I studied meditation and yoga. And over the past four decades, I added uh, or, or what came to me was Ayurvedic medicine, and uh, I wrote a, a Amazon number one bestseller on the Ayurveda Encyclopedia, mm -hmm. and then I got a, a scholarship to the Amazon rainforest, and I met the shamans there who told me wow. I'm a natural-born shaman and healer. So 
these things kept building. And then spirit said, you're a medium as well, a psychic medium from birth. Mm -hmm. And so I'm totally, you know, in terms of what you said, taking that departure, I just totally went into my heart and said, I've got to find out what's going on. Mm. Throughout the life, I would pay, integrate it, weave it back and forth into real world things. I went back into TV and film for a while, Mm -hmm. back into this spiritual and, so I'm weaving it, and now there's really that culmination of the two, and mm-hmm. that's part of what the why I think mindset mastery is so exciting to talk about. Yeah, well, it seems as though your life really has been an integration and a journey of integration of how you do the two. And again, I would definitely see you as an entrepreneur, somebody ha- who has been able to integrate both of those, because you know some of our audience they're entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. Um, And then I also think of our audience, too, as those people in the corporate world um, that are intrapreneurs, right? They see that they're running their their career as the business, right? You know, whatever their role is, they're they're really looking at their career as their business. And I see the connection between, you know, what you're saying to, you know, those entrepreneurs who have a calling to know that they need to make a difference in the world based on, you know, however they see the opportunity and the possibility to make a difference, to make an impact. Same thing for the solopreneurs, same thing for the, for the people that are in the corporate world um, and all other industries in between. You know, I mean, if you're not in corporate, you can also, you know, be in a different type of business situation. But, um, but there is that, you know, that interconnection of when you are on your path and you're doing the work that you're meant to do as opposed to, you know, what we're told we need to do. Um, you know, the first 17 years of my career, I was in the pharmaceutical industry. And part of that was because, you know, my dad said, you know, get a good, stable corporate job. (laughs) He was an entrepreneur, but he actually wanted me to be in the corporate world, um, which was really ironic. But, um, but yeah, and being able to follow, you know, after 17 years, being able to follow my own heart and be able to, to make that transition. I mean, I really see the parallelisms between, you know, our careers in that way, except, you know, mine was a lot in the corporate a little longer, you know, not following my heart as, as long as you have been. Um, and to be doing that for 40 years, um, I mean, really kudos to you. Um, and I also want to acknowledge, you know, our audience, the people that have been following their passion that really, you know, go after their dreams. But here's the thing. This is also what I want you to talk about, because I know that whenever we're, you know, in our careers, we're constantly learning, we're constantly hitting those edges of how we can expand and become our best selves. And we have to anticipate that there's always a dip, right? Right. And I always say, don't quit the dip, (laughs) you know, wait until you get through the dip. But what is it? What is there a practical tool or a skill maybe? I mean, you've given us at least two or three, you know, since we've been talking in terms of skills, practical skills that people can do. Um, but is there anything else that comes to your mind in terms of what people can do when they hit the dips? Yeah, I, this is such a, it's such a great question, Judy, because motivational speakers always tell you, go, 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 go. The reality is life is in waves. It is in cycles. And, and there's two things. And specifically when you talked about entrepreneurs, you read the stories of how stressed they are and, and how enough is not enough until they make it. And they do have a valid goal. Mm -hmm. And there has to be some, now an entrepreneur can say, well, I don't have time to meditate. And there's the old joke, if you don't have 10 minutes to meditate, you need an hour to meditate. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I never uh, heard that one. That's good. (laughs) (laughs) And a spirit has brought me an instant meditation that you can do in 20 seconds. Okay. And even at work, you don't have to shut thoughts out of your mind. All those myths they've gone away. The world has picked up faster. And so I've, among other, I'm sure other people have done this too, picked up quicker ways to meditate. Mm-hmm. It, it is a time to take a breath, eat healthy food, take a nap, go for a walk, pet your pet, mm. do something to your heart, reconnect with your heart in a slightly different way, because it's like cross training. You do two things ju- and it strengthens the overall you. Mm. Use the dip as a grace period to, to, your whole, to get your whole self connected again. That's right. And, and being connected to the breath. I mean, that's definitely, I mean, that's such a shortcut to being able to, to really center. It's the life force. It's, you know, us being able to, you know, really 
receive and give at the same time, right? Breathing is giving and receiving. Um, right. So sometimes when we're in the dip, we feel like we've given all that we could give. <laughs> That's and, true. Yeah, yeah, and we're not willing to receive help. So I also like that reminder of the breath of just being able to receive and give because, yeah, sometimes when we're in those dips, we need to remember that. <laughs> if you'd like, I'll be happy to share with you the essence of my beginner's meditation with advanced training, is it advanced results? Beginner's meditation with advanced results. I can Absolutely. Share. Yeah, let's go for it. Put your hand on your heart. Okay. Think of the thing that your biggest challenge right now it could be personal, it could be career related, it could be health related, and give it a rating. 10 is unbearably troubling and one is manageable. And now that you have that rating, think of the thing or the person you love the most that brings you the most joy in life. It could be your spouse, your son, your, your daughter, your pet, your, a sonata, uh, a sunset. And think of that thing that you love and inhale right into your heart and feel that love expanding. Take a nice deep breath in and then exhale and just feel relax into what you love. And now think back to your challenge. Has that number dropped at least a half a point or a point? Yeah, that's awesome. That's it. That's instant meditation. Wow. Feeling through the heart. That's what a spirit taught me in the Amazon rainforest. That's and I have a whole three to six hour course on that, that, but this is it. So you can just start to practice it now. Wow. That's fantastic. I love that. And yes, I definitely went down at least a point, <laughs> maybe <laughs> even a little more, yeah. but yeah, being able to connect with, with that. Um, and you know, the thought to the heart, right? Cause we, we get so caught up in here that, right. you know, we have to remember to, to drop down and that's a mastery. That's a, that's an awesome mindset mastery because it, it, it starts in the head and really brings us down to where we need to be. So let, let me ask you this. So what is it that you're doing right now? You mentioned a program, um, but what is it right now that you're doing that you're really excited about that really lights you up? Right. Yeah. Well, Judy, I'm really lit up. I'm just putting the final touches on 21 days of joy course. It's a oh. 21 day course of videos that match my book, which uh -huh. I'm offering as a gift to your listeners. Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and so that video is going to be available very soon and people can take that course online and the science says if we do something for 21 days in a row it becomes a habit so right. imagine you you're easily in the habit of joy wow Bring joy to your your entrepreneurial business or your corporation to your family to yourself wow. that's that's my joy to share that joy Wow. Well, that's so generous. And on behalf of our audience, I just want to say thank you so much and remind everybody that there's a URL right below. You can just click on the link. Yeah, you can look down there, right? <laughs> it's down there. <laughs> and they can just click on the link and they can get your free gifts. Right. And yeah, and that's such, it's such a generous, generous offer. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's important for people to have, like you said, new habits and right. things that they can uh, access that, you know, it's a, if it's as simple as, you know, connecting your hand to your heart and breathing, you know, into something that, that shifts our energy, I think that those are so powerful. Um, and like you said, you've been taught this by, by somebody that you met, um, and he was, he was a shaman, you said, in the rainforest? Was this in oh, the Amazon? It was in the Amazon rainforest, but spirit actually came down and, and did this to me. And I said, oh, I can do that. Wow. And I home and started doing it to people and they were changing instantly and it changed my life and my prayers to heal the world. Wow. Were answered to that point. So. Wow. I think that's awesome when, yeah, it's like you receive some kind of um, tool or gift or insight and then when you share it with other people and then you see how it makes the difference in their lives, it's like then you start thinking like, wow, that, that's something I've, I've really got there. You know, I need to share that. So, um, that's the best when you see other people feeling better. It's, yeah. It's the best. Wow. Well, again, thank you so much. Great gratitude for your time, for you to be here, Swami G. And again, everybody, <laughs> everybody remember, go down to that link down there and uh, get uh, the free gift. So thank you, Swami G. Thank you so much. All right. And everybody, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Your Mindset Mastery. See you then.